Hello, 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 and welcome to another video on Flight Simulator 2020. Today we are sitting in uh, one of the nearest airport um, to Mount Fuji in Japan. Um, as you can maybe spot, oh, maybe not, but uh, there is uh, one of the aircraft here uh, that is um, another user, and then we have another aircraft in the air. Um, that is going uh, to Mount Fuji, which is very nice. Um, but today we are doing something a little bit different here. Um, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, properly do a flight on uh, Cessna 172. And you can also, um, well, I'll give you some tips or um, some sort of characteristics of the Cessna 172 in real life. Uh, I am a 172 rated pilot, so I can give you some uh, idea about what the uh, actual Cessna 172 is like. Um, I do have a real world checklist here, and uh, if you would like to have it, I will um, take a picture of it and I'll put uh, I'll upload it to maybe my Google Drive um, and then I'll uh, put a link on the description so that if you want to use it at any time uh, just uh, yeah, download it and you can follow the checklist but do be aware that uh, a lot of the things in the sim is not replicated in real life so yeah, just something to be a little bit aware of. So let's um, start at the, I guess, at the exterior. So for the pre-flight, which you do not need to do on the sim, but in real life, you start right here uh, from, well, from the right. Um, so just checking the engine inlets, uh, the propeller, uh, make sure that it is uh, in good condition and there's a big guy here. Uh, and then over here right um, at where my mouse is pointing, you will see there is a... Um, oh, I don't know why someone just keep starting and um, stopping the engines, that's weird. I don't believe that's a. I don't think that's a. Uh, that's a an, an, an AI. I think that's a that's a real person. But anyway, um, yes. So the little circle thingy here that you are seeing, um, that's what we call a static port. So that is basically measuring the static. Air from oh, huh, I thought the engine died again. Um, right, so over here that's the static port, it measures the static air uh, passing through the aircraft, and then we have a static and dynamic um, air measurer here, and that is called a pedal tube. And yeah, you can read all about it, about the static and the uh, static and dynamic differences and what they uh, provide to the instruments. They um, have different functions. So over here you will see two different um, holes and they are for the air to go into the cabin. So just make sure that they are clear. Uh, which is the same, again, it's not relevant. Uh, and then over here we have two lights, that's our taxi landing lights. That's annoying, I don't know why they keep starting up and um, stopping the aircraft. Uh, that's the taxi landing lights, um, just check that there's no water inside. And then we have the navigation lights here, um, that's the red on the left. And then we have a um, strobe light, which is just over here. And make sure if on the real aircraft, just um, have your hand um, cover like the, you know, like your view of the strobe light. And you can see the, uh, the blink 
on the side of your hands because it gets like really bright uh, if you look directly into it you will be blind uh, well not blind but um, it's not good so yeah just don't look directly into it and then on the ring here uh, what we do is we use our hands and we what we do is we just move it up move it down make sure that it is uh, free and uh, yeah it's not stuck and before the pre-flight what we will do as well which I forgot to do uh, since I started the recording right as soon as uh, I jump on here so what I'll do is I'll just get into the cockpit first so this is the first thing that you should be doing turn on the masters and then you have to do a standby battery test so what you will have to do is just go to test for a couple of seconds and make sure that the test light is on and uh, yeah you can release that oh not sure why the mixture control is in and then we will put the flaps down all the way to 30 degrees so some aircraft have the uh, standby battery test some don't so it just depends on uh, whether your aircraft have it but yeah usually you don't need it uh, let's jump back out and then uh, yeah and then I'll uh, check the exterior of the of the ailerons and the wing are uh, the flaps uh, and the wing obviously uh, just to see the overall condition the strut here and uh, just under the wing I'm not sure if I can see it from here uh, it's gonna be quite tough because I still am not used to the control here so uh, I don't I don't think it is modeled but over here uh, it's really difficult but yeah just on the very um, leading edge of this um, aileron here what you will see is uh, a, a, a balance thing so there's a balance weight added to it it just prevents the stuttering of uh, the ailerons and that also helps uh, balance up the, the aircraft overall uh, and then just like looking through the overall condition we have the cargo door over here make sure that it is uh, secure there is one time that I am sure that it is secure but it wasn't and uh, when I started the engine the door just flung open uh, and I didn't even realize it uh, and luckily someone from the aero club saw it and they quickly come out and uh, tell me that the door is uh, still open but yeah make sure that um, it is securely closed because it is um, a lot of these uh, 172s are quite old so you need to bang it a uh, few times just to make sure that everything is uh, secure and then uh, coming to the back here make sure everything is intact and then come up here to the elevator and the rudder uh, so again moving the left side of the elevator move it up and down make sure that it is free and uh, there are like boats and stuff just right over here so you can see there are some holes uh, and inside there are a lot of boats that uh, you know help intact the well secure the elevator to the you know the uh, the, the rest of the I don't know what it's called the elevator that's the that's the trim and the elevator but yeah it just secured the two pieces there and then the rudder basically what you do is you move the rudder left and right check all the boats inside uh, make sure that uh, everything is secure the top you won't be able to see it but yeah just like overall just make sure that uh, nothing looks off 
and then uh, on the right side basically the same thing check the elevator the bolts um, to the side um, and then the flaps uh, and the ailerons make sure that the overall condition is good the bolts are all intact uh, both on the aileron and the flaps uh, and then on the bottom we also have a few different um, bolts and stuff make sure that everything looks good uh, obviously we have the navigation strobe lights uh, the struts come to the front oh and we have the air vent um, and then to the front we have the uh, the air inlets here um, make sure that it's clear um, nothing is built up check the uh, the left side of the propeller make sure that nothing is damaged and then what I'll do is I'll come down and you will see there's a, a, an exhaust fan uh, exhaust uh, not exhaust fan uh, exhaust tube uh, just make sure that nothing is blocked and then uh, check the um, the front wheel of I don't know what it's called this uh, hydraulic thingy um, this silver thing that you see in, in the front wheel I can't remember the name now um, but make sure that there is uh, a little bit of space at least uh, if it goes all the way down and you can barely see any like silver thingy then basically means that there is no more uh, hydraulic pressure and you will have to uh, or fluids and you have to uh, get maintenance to have a look at that and then we have the oil um, the oil is over here uh, just check the oil but on the sim again you don't need to check it we have the fuel tank left right um, fuel, fuel in the tank on the both uh, on both ends uh, and you have to measure it in real life obviously uh, in the scene you can just adjust it over here um, and then yeah I'll come down here back to the right right side of the wing I'll uh, drain the fuel make sure that there is no um, fuel contamination inside the tank there are five um, different um, holes that you can drain the fuel from same over on the left side uh, after I did do that then I'll come down to the bottom of the aircraft just to the a little bit to the left of the uh, front wheel there are two different holes where you can uh, drain the fuel from so one is from the uh, from the uh, from the engine where they feed the fuel fit the fuel uh, and there is another one that I can't remember where it's uh, coming from but yeah there are two that you need to uh, drain the fuel from uh, it's been a while uh, since I did my theory so can't, re can't really remember where they are from but yeah basically there are two holes that you need to drain the fuel um, to check for fuel contaminations and yeah once you do once you do that then i just now i'm trying to and now now i'm thinking that that is actually an ai because i don't think uh, a sane person is going to keep starting and uh, stopping the aircraft it's probably an ai um yeah so we'll jump back into the cockpit bring the flaps back up um inside the yoke um, probably it's not modeled here uh, yeah it's not modeled but there is a hole in like somewhere around here so basically what you do is you put a stick right through it so you push it in uh, and there's a hole like uh, there's a hole over there so you basically match the hole put the stick through it and that basically prevents the yoke from um, moving um, because especially when you park the aircraft in high winds um, it blows the you know the surface and it could cause damage but yeah other than that um, 
obviously in the sim you don't have to do any of those but that's what I do in real life that's uh, how I do the checks and once you done all the paper well once you be done all the paperwork in real life we our plan we sign it off and then we jump into the aircraft we start it up um, well before we start it up we basically have to look at the checklist so before well before engine start check so we have pre-flight prep we have done that uh, seats so basically adjust your seats uh, harnesses and doors make sure that it is secure um, and then we have fuel selector on both fuel selector is down here so we have the right the both and the left and then we have the fuel cock here make sure that it's in because if it's out that means you shut it off and there won't be any fuel feeding in um, and then we have mixture which is the red thingy here just put it all the way in uh, to 100% uh, or we call it rich um, and then once you do that you put the throttle all the way in as well and what that does is it fits the fuel into the engines um, and if the aircraft is um, if it's the first flight or it has been quite a while before um, before you so let's say there are like two hours since the last flight uh, most likely the engines would have been uh, cooled down so uh, what you do is uh, you will look at over here uh, and while you're doing that just uh, check that uh, the lights are on so we have navigations and now when you're about to start the engines then you turn on the beacons uh, check that all the circuit breakers are in so how you will be able to tell if the engine is warm is you tell from the oil temperature so the oil temperature right now is all the way to the left and that means it's cold uh, that means the engine is not warm uh, so what you have to do is uh, you turn on the fuel pump so you see the fuel flow well it wouldn't jump up that quickly but that's uh that's usually what it shows uh, it will slowly come up and then you turn the fuel pump off it will slowly come back down um, and then you just bring the throttle back uh, so check that your parking brake is on Make sure that your avionics are off because that drains the battery. Um, turn on your beacon lights. We have already checked the circuit. Uh, master is on. So prime is prime if cold. So we have already primed it with the fuel pump. Um, throttle to five millimeters so you just push it in uh, about uh, about one fifth in uh, and then what you do is you release uh, or cut off the mixture so in real life what happens is if you leave it if, if you put in the fuel for too long uh, what happens is it floods the engine so um, in some aircraft um, not particularly the Cessna but uh, when I was flying the Diamond it happens very often uh, what happens is it floods the, the fuel floods the engine and when you try to start the engine it doesn't want to start up so it won't I suppose it won't happen in the sim but in real life if you start it up and it doesn't work what you do is you have to like cut off everything so throttle, throttle in mixture off uh, and what you do is you will um, put the ignition on to uh, to start and you just run it for maybe like you know five to ten seconds ten seconds is the maximum so once you run it turn it off and then you basically restart the process so mixture in throttle in um, if you think that you need 
a little bit of uh, fuel pump, turn it on a little bit, and then back mixture of uh, throttle in a little bit, and then we start the process. Um, so we have lights on, make sure that it is clear left, clear center, clear right. Hold the brakes uh, in in the same yeah, the, the parking brake is very effective, but in real life the parking brake is shit. So um, if you don't hold the brakes, if you don't press it in, your aircraft will will um, will roll to the front as you are starting the engines. So make sure that in real life, yeah, press on the brakes because yeah, the parking brakes is not very effective. Oh, there we go. I didn't know that the warning thing is um, the thing going off. Uh, but yeah, uh, make sure that it is clear. And then as you go right, left, both. And then when you go start, in the sim it's not modeled. But in real life you can hear, as you bring it to the start, you will hear the, the sort of like the spark. Or it just like, it, it just feels like it is uh, starting. And when that happens, you push the mixture in, uh, and that will uh, start the engines. But on the same, so far I've done maybe like two flights, and I haven't noticed that um, that um, that spark. So uh, it's quite hard to tell from the same. But yeah, in real life, you will definitely be able to tell it. Uh, and if you don't hear the spark, that means uh, there's either not enough fuel, or yeah, you have flooded the engines. But uh, anyway, let's um, start the engines here and uh, get this flight going. Yeah, so like that, um, if you don't hear it, then it basically means that yeah, there's probably not enough fuel. So what I'll do is I'll just um, pump in some fuel. But this uh, this time I'll put the mixture in because it will definitely start on the sim. But yeah, in real life it it won't start. So there we go, the engine has started, bring the throttle back, um, because you know it's quite hard to tell. So bring it back to 1000 RPM, that is a very good number. Um, don't leave it too low because yeah, you have to warm up the engines. At any time if the aircraft is idle, then you bring the RPM to 1000. Except when you are taxiing, if it's going too fast then you just bring it back to idle. But otherwise, yeah, leave it at the thousand. So that's um, that's done. We have um, we we have a good uh, oil pressure, oil temperature. EGT should be rising. Uh, vacuum is good, and we have a uh, full tank of fuel. And it's very important. As soon as you start the engines, check the oil pressure. Because if the oil pressure is not on the green, that means there is a big problem, and you have to um, you have to quickly shut it down and get the maintenance to uh, look at it. But yeah, uh, everything looks good here. So after start checklist, uh, thousand RPM, which we are, uh, no fire. I don't see any smoke, so we are good. Uh, oil pressure, oil pressure is on the green range. Uh, Air meter, so that's the uh, well. It depends on your aircraft, but yeah, over here we have uh, we have the amps here at uh, 47. Uh, different aircraft have different um, way of seeing the electrical uh, numbers, so it just depends. Uh, we can uh, oh. Before we do the avionics, we have to do the dead cut check. So what we do is, we go left, right, left, both. That's how you do the dead cut check. Just to make sure that all the uh, magnetos are working correctly. 
because if you go like left and the engine suddenly you know die down then that's mean your left magneto is uh, not working so you need to get that fixed mixture lean for taxi uh, our uh, we are uh, I'm not sure what our weather is are we able to see what our weather is? Let's uh, see if we can get it from here. Uh, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. No, we don't have ATs here, which is a shame. Um, I'm not sure what the what the normal height is over here. Uh, is there a way to find out? Let me quickly have a look. So we have RJGO. Maybe I should just get the charts. That should be a bit easier. If they have a chart for that. I'm not sure. I mean, it's a pretty small airport. So, yeah, I can't find it. Um, right. What else can I do? Maybe I'll try, say, Flight Aware. They might have some information on the airport that I can use. Uh, I don't even know what this airport is called. I've forgotten what the name of the airport is. Uh, VFR. Close that. Yeah, it just says RJGO. I'm not sure what the name is. Right. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like we have any information on this airport, so we just have to go with it. Um, because I can't get the weather settings over here. It's like blackout, so I'm not sure how to get it. But anyway, um, just assume that we are correct. So we are under 3000 feet, so mixture is rich. And then uh, we have avionics, turn that on, that will turn on the um, navigation display over there. So I'll press enter and you will get your map and your engines um, parameters will be switched over to the second display. Right, uh, AVIP ADs, we don't have that, so we can uh, skip that. Altimeter, obviously we don't have the AVIP or the ATIS, so, and we don't have the charts, so we can't get that. Uh, radio check, we don't have any, well, I think we do have a radio, but um, I'll do that when we taxi out, uh, but obviously we don't need it. On the flight sim, uh, radio and transponders. So set your radio frequency if you need it, but uh, we don't have to do it here. Uh, transponder, we just set VFR. And make sure when you change your transponder, you are on the standby mode because what happens is if, I mean in real life, if you are on altitude or if you are on on, and then you go to code and you start typing in, what happens is that say that 4, 3, you will start transmitting this 
coat um, to the outside world which you uh, do not want so make sure before you change it bring it to standby change it bring it back to our uh, altitude or on whichever one you are gonna use uh, but yeah that's that's uh, what you need but obviously on the same yeah you don't have to do that uh, let's see I like this one so uh, whoops go back there uh, using GPS I believe uh, I'm not very familiar with the G1000 so I'll probably be winging it here so we have the references uh, set up for us our best glide speed is 68 knots rotate at 55 knots it's a little bit uh, faster than in real life because uh, it's usually about 65 uh, best uh, best rate of climb is 74 best angle of climb is 62 so vx vy um, so at 62 knots you'll be climbing a lot faster but your airspeed obviously will be uh, a lot lower that means you're covering less ground uh, at 74 knots you'll be climbing a little bit less steep but you'll cover more ground uh, so that's basically it right um, taxi we will do a brake test as we are taxiing out so turn on the taxi lights the strobe lights clear left clear center clear right um, I think I'll actually make a left turn here so let's go brakes off whoops press the wrong thing and then let's taxi to the left here and in real life you can use a lot less power to actually move the aircraft but on uh, on the flight sim here it seems like you need quite a bit of uh, power to actually get it moving uh, unless you are on grass if you are on grass then you do need quite a bit of power to get it to uh, initially move but if you are on you know um, on asphalt or solid surface then it actually takes very little power to um, to get it running so we assume this is our startup position so what you have to do is you have to align your heading to the headwind so it's about there and in the real world when you are making a turn and you stop and if you look outside um, yeah oh no it's not modeled but um, on the on the front wheel what happens is that it will it will be um, you know sort of angled so as you are doing your run-ups and if you accidentally you know release the brake what happens is that the aircraft actually you know swing to the left well because we are turning left just now so it will swing to the left so what we have to do is we just uh, give it a bit more power and uh, go neutral let it move a little bit to the front and that will just uh, set the nose uh, nose wheel straight and obviously make sure that your engines is uh, running at a thousand Turn on your parking brake. Oh, we forgot to do the brake check. So you do the brake check as soon as you start rolling at the parking, but yeah, we forgot to do that. Right, um, so we are assuming this is our run up area. Make sure that we are aligning to the headwind. Um, check that our oil pressure and temperature is good oil pressure temperature is on the green range uh, so you can see the green here so that's where it should be um, 
mixture is rich throttle to what, 1800 rpm just make sure that it is clear and then you run it to uh, 1800 and make sure you are holding the brakes in real life because like I say the parking brake is um, it doesn't work this well so your your aircraft will definitely be rolling off uh, if you don't hold on the brakes that's about about right um, check the oil pressure and temperature make sure it is still on the green range um, and then what you do is you do a backdrop check so on the magneto on the left here you switch it from both to left um, you see a bit of a drop uh, make sure that it doesn't drop more than 150 rpm go back to both and then you go to the right and then from right you go to both ah sorry I mean from right you go to left and from right to left there is usually a difference uh, but over here it's not modeled but yeah there is um, in real life you will see a little bit of a difference and uh, you have to make sure that those two are not more than uh, 50 rpm and then go back to both and then suction we have a vacuum here it's on the green range uh, emitter is um, zero so it's uh, so the charge from our battery used just now and then bring it back all the way to idle so like zero throttle not zero rpm uh, just make sure that it sounds all right and then move it back to a thousand all right pre takeoff checks so um, we have sort of a, um, a mental sort of like abbreviations for it um, but I'll just follow the checklist just um, just so it's a bit easier for you uh, we'll go with we'll start from here so uh, we'll go mixture rich throttle is a thousand rpm um, trim we'll go for takeoff about there uh, make sure fuel cock is in fuel tank is both uh, we have this thing called uh, alternate static port valve um, which is not available on my aircraft so I'm not very sure what it does but it's in so assuming that uh, that's where it should be uh, make sure that all the circuit breakers are in make sure the lights are where you want it to be um, change it if you need to and then check that masters avionics on I believe that is on arm um, and then check your radio uh, I mean here that's your navigation which on VFR you don't need to do that um, and then check that the speed the altitude is correct adjust your barometer as you wish um, switch this heading to a uh, runway heading since we do not know where the uh, runway heading is I'll just um, I'll just move it to about there oh, no actually it's like more like there something like that uh, we will match the heading once we line up uh, once you do that come back over here make sure your engines are doing good still uh, make sure that everything is charging oh the wind is different over here it's showing headwind over there it's showing crosswind not too sure why that is um, yeah uh, I think that's about it uh, oh we can do topo and we can do next red that's cool I didn't know that um, I was trying to find this feature but I thought it was missing but yeah apparently you can uh, use that all right um, if you need to set something on your G1000 then basically set it when you have to uh, standby instruments 
make sure that your barometer is matching um, it doesn't do both when you change it here it doesn't change it there so you have to like yeah match it basically um, make sure that your AH is um, showing correctly uh, some aircraft or most aircraft will have a balance ball so make sure the balance ball is balanced um, not too sure why there isn't one here um, check your compass as well make sure that it is um, showing the right thing and then down to the trim uh, sorry I mean the flaps not the trim uh, the flaps uh, make sure that it is up so on a short runway so if you're doing short fill you will use 10 degrees of flaps and over here it's not modeled as well but in real life between up and 10 degrees oh actually it is so you can see that it's sort of like a like a um, so that is sort of this I don't know what it's called like uh, like a gap not a gap it's uh yeah I don't know what it's called but you basically can see it here so uh, when I'm moving up from flaps up to flaps 10 what I do is I push it to the left and I pull it down and it will basically stop there and I don't need to visually see it because I know that that's where it stops and that's 10 degrees um, so it's very good when you are like flying in real life um, and you are busy doing something else and you need the flaps you basically don't need to see it because yeah, there's this little stop thing here that you can use uh, just push it to the left pull it down and it will just stop there so it's uh, it's very handy I am not sure how long our runway is um, I'm not sure if I can see it from here it looks kind of short uh, so okay we I'll demonstrate a short feel so we go flaps 10 um, right and uh, if you need the cabin heat you can pull it but yeah we don't need it uh, cabin air yeah we need cabin air and yeah um, check that your seat belts um, seat belts and doors are locked windows are closed on both sides obviously and then um, I'm trying to see where I am up to on the checklist uh, yeah controls so uh, we'll just move oh you can't see it because I've hidden it so bring it back so just go full left full up full right full down and you can uh, look on the side uh, just to make sure that it is doing oh I don't know why it's really hard to do that but if we go down here you can basically see it and you can see the back as well so if you just move a little bit over there in real life it's a lot easier to see but um, it's probably harder to see in uh, in here but yeah over here you can see a little bit just to make sure that it is moving in the right direction once you have done that you basically come back and you do a takeoff safety brief so we'll take off from I'm not sure what the runway is whatever that runway is take off straight ahead uh, if any of the engine is looking off we will just uh, pull the throttle back and uh, stop the aircraft as soon as possible uh, once we have taken off since it's a short runway uh, if engine has been cut off below say a thousand feet um, what we do is we <coughs> sorry so below a thousand feet if engine is that what we'll do is we'll aim uh, between 30 degrees left or right and we will land um, yeah between those um, uh, those sites so 30 degrees to the left or 30 degrees to the right or straight ahead uh, as long as there's a suitable field to land on 
uh, once we get above a thousand feet, we can um, maybe try to come back if uh, we have enough altitude. And obviously, our best glide speed is uh, here, 68 knots. So we'll try to maintain uh, 68. Since we are also doing short field takeoff, our short field climb is uh, at 62 knots, so we will be climbing at 62 knots. Uh, we probably might initially climb to. Weather is pretty good today, so let's uh, say we climb to 6,000 for now. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it. So we can. Uh, put the brakes off and let's uh, head over to the runway mm. we'll probably go around there because uh, it's a little bit close over there. So because it is a short field, we will have to make use of every available inch of the runway. So since we have a little bit of space on the left, um, Make sure that the runway is clear. We'll come over. Go all the way to the edge of the runway. And we'll make use of uh, every inch of this runway. Because it is not very long. So turn back here. And make sure that we are lined up properly. About uh, we are a little bit off, but that's all right. Uh, about there looks good. Uh, match our heading to the runway. So 200 degrees, 200 degrees on the compass. So we are good. Uh, we can turn on the lights. Make sure that our um, transponder is on out. Uh, it should do that on some aircraft automatically, but some aircraft you have to uh, manually do it. So the takeoff uh, for short field is basically you put the throttle all the way in uh, and make sure that your RPM is within the range, uh, which is um, probably between the green arc and the little bit uh, around the white arc there. Definitely won't be on the red arc. But if it, is, if it is on the red arc, then you have to pull back a little bit because um, it's bad for the engines. Uh, make sure that when you power up, everything here is on the green range before you um, uh, release the brakes. So I'm still holding the brakes. And then I'll power up all the way in. Check our RPM. RPM is 2200, uh, oil pressure is on the green range, oil temperature on the green range, vacuum is good, um, and nothing else is looking out of the ordinary. Uh, runway is clear, let's uh, release the brakes and um, yeah, let's go. Oh, hold on, I'm still looking at my checklist here, make sure our lights are all on, okay forgot to um, check that. Alright, uh, back off and let's go. So obviously you need some right rudder. Speed is coming up. So we are, because we are flaps 10, so we are looking at about 50, 55 knots for rotate. About there. And we are up. We are climbing at um, 62, so nose down a bit. Get that airspeed. 
um, obviously you do not want to um, climb without your airspeed because you will definitely stall so we have a little bit of uh, speed over there so make sure that we are trained properly all right our climb rate is not very good here and that's because we are in a high altitude environment let's uh, make the right turn and uh, fly towards Mount Fuji and as you are climbing make sure that you are not banking over 20 degrees because once you go so say if you go to 30 degrees you'll start losing your airspeed so when you're in a climb make sure that you yeah you stay within 20 degrees of bank so as we are climbing up here uh, past 400 feet uh, flaps up lights off and try to maintain uh, 62 500. so as we are passing 3000 feet what we can do is um, I'm just trying to trim this out so that we don't have to do too much work uh, it's a little bit difficult here yeah that's about that's about right uh, I'll match the heading over here and I'll just turn on the autopilot for now uh, let's go heading VS and uh, say 400 feet climb oh maybe a bit more so uh, as we are passing 10,000 feet what you want to do is you want to start leaning your mixture so because the air is thinner uh, what you want to do I'll just bring my VS down a bit so that we don't get too slow uh, so as you are leaning the mixture so you're, pull, you're pulling the mixture back uh, what you see is your RPM will start to increase and you just keep pulling it back until you see a drop so that's a drop so you just push it a little bit in uh, and that is your best uh, mixture to fuel ratio or mixture to air ratio uh, we are obviously very low here so um, we might actually crash uh, can we climb I'll just uh, bring it to a store here and recover ah uh, no nah. we are dead we are dead all right uh, I'll come back again and um, yeah and we will uh, look at the rest all right we are back up in the air again uh, Mount Fuji is just off to our right but this time I think we probably should stick to the left uh, so I will just um, set the autopilot here because I'm lazy and I will uh, set vertical speed to about 400 500 should be alright engage autopilot right so we just uh, slowly gain some airspeed over here so lights off flaps up that will give us a uh, pretty good climb rate
and make sure to uh, adjust your mixture to give you the uh, best performance uh, which is about there maybe a bit less yeah about there is good alright uh, let's uh, make a left turn to east and again make sure you don't um, you don't make a 30 degrees turn just uh, build up our airspeed here Alright, I'll take manual control first just to uh, build up our airspeed. Alright, 62. Our trim is way off. Yeah, the autopilot is not very good with uh, managing the speed there. Uh, about there is good. Alright, 500 nose up or 400 nose up and match the heading. Right, so we are continuing our climb here slowly. Actually, we might not even do Mount Fuji. Um, that's actually what I'll do is I'll turn over to the airport, um, the next airport, and we can just uh, look at Mount Fuji from from the view here. So 20 degrees bank, and a bit more um, pitch up. Just to get back to our 62 knots. Uh, about there, but there is a mountain. Uh, I'm not sure if we can uh, climb through that, so maybe just go a bit off to the right here and we can go around it. There we go, and we have a good view of uh, Mount Fuji here. Alright, let's uh, trim it back. Right, so we can actually climb to 6,000, that should be alright. Uh, yeah, continue the climb. Right, so that's um, yeah, that's it from the climb here. There isn't much to do, so basically what you just do is just uh, monitor the fuel quantity, the uh, engines, TMPs, that's what we call it. Uh, make sure it's on the green range. Um, so what we usually measure the fuel is uh, every 10 gallons that's an hour of uh, flight time so one hour two hour three hours I believe so it's uh, 30 gallons but I think flight time is like about five hours 
yeah, scrap that. I forgot about it. So, but I'm pretty sure that's one hour or maybe two hours. I can't remember. But yeah, um, I'll have to go back and do a bit of research on that fuel usage. Yeah, as I've said, I haven't flown for quite a few months now, so things are. I'm getting a bit forgetful. Alright, we are approaching 6000 here. So once you get to the cruise level, what you'll be doing is you just keep the throttle all the way into a 100% and you just wait for the uh, airspeed to climb. I'm just trying to uh, get the best mixture right here. Uh, right, so yeah, basically wait until the airspeed get to a hundred knots, and then you'll pull back to about uh, about 21, 2200 RPM. That's uh, the usual cruise uh, cruise RPM. So a hundred knots, pull it back. Uh, about there is actually not too bad. So we just leave it there. because obviously we are quite high so our airspeed will be a bit low but our true airspeed should be uh, should be quite high uh, if we can find it somewhere uh, we have the ground speed there uh, I can't find the true airspeed yeah I'm not sure where it is But yeah, we can uh, have a look at Mount Fuji from here. It's quite beautiful, but obviously it's quite high, so it's going to uh, be a bit of a struggle for the Cessna. But with a more powerful aircraft, you can definitely um, go up there. But yeah, the uh, Cessna 172 is not very powerful, but it is rated. Um, to climb up to I think 14 or 17,000 feet something like that I think the airport is uh, it's just somewhere not too far. It's basically, there's a it's a river, and then um, the airport is just a little bit past that. So it could be where the um, where the mountain is, just the um, yeah the bottom of the mountains there. So while we are cruising up here, uh, I can show you a few tricks. So uh, what we can do, a very basic thing, is a stall. So on the aircraft, when you pitch up and your airspeed starts to bleed off, um, you basically have no more energy to stay at the altitude and what it does it, it basically stalls. So every time before we do a stall practice, we have to do a, um, a checklist. It's called Hazel Checks. Um, so the first one it's H. H stands for height. Uh, and we do not want to be too low. So we have to make sure that um, our height is sufficient to recover. Uh, we usually like it to be about two, three thousand feet 
AGL that stands for above ground level um, and we obviously are by the looks of it uh, A stands for airframe so you have to make sure that your airframe is uh, set correctly flaps is up um, our undercarriage is fixed so the the wheels uh, so when it's fixed there's nothing we can do um, and then S is for um, our safety uh, so our harness cargo make sure that everything is um, secure um, E is for engines oh I don't know what I scroll over there um, so make sure your T's and P's are on the green range which it is uh, location is the which is the next one uh, there are two L's locations uh, you do not want to be on a build-up area but since we are just on the way and I well we are on the sim as well so it doesn't matter uh, but in a real life you do not want to be doing it here because it is a very dangerous activity uh, you want to do it maybe like by the sea or somewhere like not build up so maybe in a rural area and the next L is lookout so you can do two different lookouts um, the first one is make a 180 degrees turn uh, either side or what you can do is you can do an uh, sort, of, sort of like a snake um, shape so you can go like left right 90 degrees so 90 degrees to the left 90 degrees to the right or you can do 90 degrees to the right 90 degrees to the left since we have mountains here what we'll do is we'll do uh, and we're heading that way anyway so we'll do a 90 degrees to the left and while you're doing that turn you're basically looking up looking to the left looking to the right make sure that uh, there is no traffic um, anywhere around you and obviously you also have to announce what you are doing and then do a 90 degrees to the right same thing while you're turning looking left looking right looking up and looking down make sure there is uh, no traffic and once you have done that you basically can um, start the uh, the activity so a basic store is uh, flaps up so we have flaps up and you basically bring the throttle back uh, we have to maintain 6000 so you just pitch up oops sorry uh, because when you power down your nose would want to um, go down so you have to maintain by uh, pulling your yoke as your aircraft gets slower you will need a lot more pitch and that's the store it's a little bit early uh, just keep pulling keep pulling and there we go uh, that's a bit aggressive but you because I need, uh, need the hand to uh, do the throttle but um, yeah it wouldn't be that aggressive it would be you basically just relieve some pressure so just uh, relieve some pressure let the airspeed build up and then you recover so you just uh, climb back up to a uh, 6000 but on the real life you would um, want to be not losing about more than 200 feet if you lose more than 200 feet it's bad so we we have already lost about a thousand feet there so that's not very good um, but yeah so we just recover back to 6000 so that's a basic store it's a little bit earlier than I would like um, the speed should be about 35-40 knots yeah maybe about 40 knots uh, when the when the when you can hear the uh, store horn but usually not too more too much more than that uh, we are back at uh, 6000 our airspeed is uh, coming back just uh, make sure to get our airspeed back up before we do the second one 
while we are waiting for that, uh, the second one is the advanced store. So the advanced store is basically uh, putting the flaps down uh, for like a landing configuration. So once you have completed your first uh, check and you're doing it again, um, your hazel checks will shorten. So instead of uh, hazel, you just go uh, engines is on the green range TMPs. Uh, make sure your safety is still good. So you have your harness, cargo is still secure, and then uh, make sure that your location is still good and uh, do your lookouts. So left, right. So we are assuming that we have already done those. Bring your uh, bring the throttle back a bit. And I'll uh, drink some water first. Alright, but well, I actually wasn't drinking water, I'm uh, drinking wine. So I may be a bit impaired here, um, but it's a sim, so who cares. Right, um, advanced store. So, assuming we have done those checks, so what we'll do is we will bring the RPM. Oh, I actually need two hands for this, it's too complicated. So what you want is actually to bring it down to 1500 RPM. And then uh, once you're in the green range, you can uh, bring in the flaps. So I'm just trimming it up, flaps 10 degrees. And then on the green arc, flaps full and then RPM to 1800. And because it is very sluggish now, um, your, you know, your um, ailerons won't do much. So you will actually need your rudder. Your rudder will help a lot in this case. Uh, but we're still pulling back, thirty knots, and yeah, that's the store. And uh, oh, that's the wing drop. And I forgot not to use my uh, ailerons. So that's a good lesson there. Don't use your ailerons when you're on a wing store. Because if you do that, you'll basically put the aircraft in a spin. Because uh, my legs wasn't on the rudder, so. I had to use the ailerons, but that's the worst idea ever. But yeah, basically when you're recovering, go throttle to full. Bring your, bring your flaps uh, straight up. And uh, just try to recover. Right, we'll just move a bit to the left here because our airport seems to be just um, just under us. That's all right. We'll just uh, stay on this heading for a bit. So just now, well, basically, I did a very bad wing drop demonstration, but. Uh, the next time, so the next one, we will do a uh, proper wing drop without the spin. Because that's how you are supposed to do it. Alright, we are about there. 6,000. Trim it. Let the air speed build up. So basically, next thing is the wing drop. And wing drop, 
we are basically doing the same thing except that it is a lot more controlled than the spin So just uh, go a bit more nose down. So as we are uh, building up speed, we can uh, we can do the hazel checks again. Um, obviously, we can shorten it. So just engines, TMP is on the green range. Uh, safety is good. Locations not in the build up area. Lookout. We are uh, assuming that we have done that. We are climbing again. So I'll just uh, pitch down a bit. All right. That's about good over there. Okay, let's do a ring drop, and this time it's uh, basically the same. So we'll bring it back to thirteen hundred or uh, fifteen hundred RPM and uh, maintain our altitude um, under 100 knots we can bring flaps 1 uh, green arc we can bring in full flaps maintain the altitude there um, ailerons is going to be very sluggish here so we are basically be moving with our rudder if we need to but uh, keep pulling back and if you just keep the ailerons level one ring will drop so keep pulling back there we go and I uh, use rudder full power yeah so as you can see that is a lot more control because we have the rudder uh, and we are basically yeah just uh, recover that uh, forgot to bring flaps up so flaps up so if you're doing your flight training you will definitely learn that when your aircraft is in a store um, don't use your ailerons because they will just further aggravate your stall so what you want to do is use your rudder because that's the uh, that's the most effective way and that will prevent you from uh, further stalling actually we should be starting our descent now so let's start our descent here uh, bring the power back So just make a turn here uh, so one thing about turn as well so if I can then uh, demonstrate to you so on the 30 degrees bank uh, actually we'll just go level off here we'll just bring the power back to normal so if we go level here so I'll just trim it out make sure that we are uh, trim properly about there so if we do a turn now 30 degrees you won't see any big difference but as we move towards uh, 45 what you see is your airspeed start to uh, I mean your not your air, well your airspeed is increasing but your rate of descent is also uh, your rate of descent is also decreasing so what you have to do is you have to keep pulling back the yoke uh, that will help you to control your uh, rate of descent um, but you obviously be looking out the window and you just have to look out and uh, make sure that you reference on the horizon and if you just uh, keep it over there then your rate of descent will basically be you know be good but obviously when you are doing the turn you have to um, look at your instruments to make sure that you don't uh, go back to 30 degrees and uh, as you can see there as well when we are doing our steep turn that's called a steep turn 
uh, we get the store horn at about 50 knots and that is because of the extra G load so when you are doing a steep turn you are pulling back and you will feel the G load and that is uh, basically the extra weight uh, put on the aircraft so yeah your stall speed is going to um, increase a lot so yeah that's a, a bit of a crash course for the Cessna but you definitely learn that if you go through a uh, flight school if you do, do your PPL uh, that's the uh, basically the basic things that you'll be learning but obviously there are a lot of uh, information that I'm not showing here so uh, it's just uh, a bit of an aid for anyone who is thinking of making it a little bit more realistic um, these are the things that you can be looking out for I have the airport in sight I believe uh, let's uh, continue our descent I believe that's the one over there it's a, I think it's a pretty short airfield as well so uh, let's bring the power back So I think we will land on the other side. So we just uh, make a turn and then I uh, land on the other side. And one thing you uh, you will also notice, without using my ailerons, if I need to turn, I can just use my rudder. Obviously, that's uh, a little bit weird because you feel the yaw. Uh, but with very little bit of change especially if you are flying in like turbulent uh, places and you just need to keep it level instead of using your ailerons you can just use your rudder just to keep it level but yeah on the sim it's quite hard to judge uh, in, uh, in real life it's going to be a lot easier to judge Alright, we are about downwind over here. Uh, let's not stop the descent. Continue. So as we are downwind, we will do our downwind tracks. So on our downwind tracks, what we are looking for is uh, this is not on the checklist by the way. So this is basically by heart. Uh, we'll go brake check. So you pump the brakes, make sure that it is uh, working, and then you go mixture rich, uh, mixture is rich, turn on your lights, and yeah, that's it. And at about 45 degrees, we can uh, start the turn. Obviously, we are a bit high, but we are also quite far. So that should be all right. We can slowly start the turn here. By the time we get there, we should be good. We are quite in a uh, we are in a quite steep turn as well. I mean steep descent. So just bring it back a bit, just to uh, allow our airspeed to slow down. So right one turn is about here just so you know but uh, we usually look at the uh, the turning ball that have an indication but we don't have a turning ball here so it's a bit hard to tell all right we are under 100 knots and we are um, on the white arc so we can uh, basically go full flaps if, if we need but I'll just go flaps one for now that will give us a balloon uh, but airspeed will also start dropping so just push the nose down and uh, make the turn over here to final a bit early I can't really see where the runway is so keep it at 70 knots I think that's the runway there I can see an aircraft uh, we are kind of very low actually
All right, that's about right there. And go full flaps. And it should be about 1500 RPM. That's the uh, that's about where you want to aim it. So because it's a short view, what you can do is when you are slowing down, you can pull up your elevator. So your elevator basically acts as a, like a speed brake. So that will help you stop a lot faster as well. Uh, because yeah, we bounce a bit. So uh, yeah, I use the uh, full elevator as just like a speed brake. So that will help us stop a lot quicker, uh, which we did. Uh, so let's vacate the runway here, make a turn. So yeah, that is it. Um, oh, look at that, it's beautiful. I'm not sure where this is, but um, I would definitely would love to fly here if um, if I live here, but I don't. But this is uh, good enough, and we have this gorgeous scenery. The uh, the air, the aircraft parking spot basically looks directly to uh, Mount Fuji, which is uh, awesome. But yeah, I hope you find this little sort of tutorial-ish thingy uh, helpful. Um, yeah, if you find it uh, helpful, feel free to give me a thumbs up. That will be uh, very much appreciated as well. If you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments below. I will uh, try to answer your questions. Uh, I'm not sure what that truck is doing, but I'll park in front of it. Just hopefully I don't crash into it. and about this all right all right as you stop just uh, bring it back to a thousand rpm park back on after landing checklist landing lights off taxi lights off strobe lights uh, can come off flaps is up transponder can uh, go to standby which it already is uh, we have a tracker which uh, it's not available here, so we can uh, ignore that. Uh, shutdown checks, we are parked at 1000 RPM. Uh, ELT, that's the emergency locator transmitter, uh, which is over here. And uh, what we can do is we can tune it to uh, a frequency. I cannot remember what the frequency is now, uh, but we basically tune that and then pull the uh, the radio. When you pull it, you can hear like a enhanced uh, version of the radio, and you can basically hear if the ELT is activated. Uh, but we can't do it here, so I uh, can ignore that. Uh, avionics can come off, Oop. and then we can do a live cut check. So this time, instead of going. Uh, left right we can go all the way off back to both so we just go one two three one two three yeah so that's basically the life cut check it basically also helps to see if there's any issue with the uh, with the magnetos um, I think you probably don't need to go to off you just do the same thing left right left both but yeah, sometimes when the key, we just like do it quickly, it doesn't really matter. We can go all the way to off and uh, back to both. It doesn't really affect much. Um, mixture can come off. That will cut the engines off. Throttle back to uh, idle. 
masters can come off and ignition can come off but usually we do the other way so we go ignition off masters off oh that guy that guy just um g just uh, <laughs> he just basically run into us but yeah anyway this is it uh, we are here in whatever airport this is i have no idea let's uh, jump out and look at this very beautiful view over here look at that yeah basically this is like a million dollar view i'm sure people who are flying here will be uh enjoying this gorgeous view here but uh yeah as i said if you find this useful you if you find this um yeah find this somewhat helpful uh feel free to give me a thumbs up that is uh, very much appreciated if you have questions uh, leave them in the comments I'll try to help with uh, any questions that you have uh, if you're new to my channel feel free to subscribe as well I do post contents about once or twice a week um, so I don't really have a schedule so you just uh, press the subscribe and the bell notification and that will give you a notification when I uh, post a video that's the easiest way because yeah, I don't really have a schedule um, check out my discord it's on the bottom right corner uh, if you would like to um, do any sort of like um, aviation flight sim discussions or share contents um, that's where you can do it uh, I will be also on there so if you would like to uh, chat with me and stuff uh, I'll be on there as well uh, if you would like to check out my patreons um, I do not have anyone there yet but if you feel like uh, supporting me you can do that go to my patreons I'll leave the link on the description and on the uh, on the end screen so you can check it out I'm not sure if it's on the end screen it might not be but it will definitely be on the description so you can check that out um, I think I have like a dollar or two per month so if you are quite financially restrictive um, you can contribute very little bit uh, if you feel generous uh, I think the maximum is like $30 a month uh, you can do that as well um, and once I have uh, a few people there then I'll start um, yeah posting more regularly on patreons first and then uh, YouTube will be um, yeah, will be released a little bit later and I'll probably be adding a bit more perks as uh, as we go but yeah that is it from wherever this place is uh, in Japan I hope you uh, enjoyed this beautiful gorgeous scenery I didn't even know I have never flown here before I just randomly pick a place and um, yeah I didn't realize we ended up being in such a uh, beautiful airport uh, but yeah anyway uh, this is it for now I will see you all on the next video